So last week I was meant to be in the northeast of England filming for my new printing class, but that didn't happen for one reason or another. So instead I'm going this week, which is why I've put together this quick video to show my five favorite techniques for better and cleaner selections in Photoshop. Now, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, I've included a link in the description part of the video where you can download this exact same file. But we're going to start off by first of all making a selection of me. It's going to be very, very easy because I'm on a very bright background. We'll do it by going to the Select menu and then choosing Subject. And straight away we can see that we get the marching ants going around me. Now that we've got that, I'll come over to the Layers panel and I will click to add a layer mask. And it looks as though I've been cut off the original background. But really, because I'm using a layer mask, all that's happening is within the layer mask, the black area is hiding the background, the white area is revealing me. And it actually looks as though it's done a really, really good job. However, if we just add a layer directly below this, let's just hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, and click on the Add New Layer icon. That puts it underneath. Then I'll go to the Edit menu and choose Fill, and we'll just put 50% grey. So now we can see exactly what we've got. And if we zoom in, we can see what I'm talking about. And this is that white area, this halo going around me. Now that white area is basically the original background still showing through because the original selection wasn't quite tight enough on the subject to, to kind of get rid of it. But it's very, very easy to remove. All we need to do is come over to the Layers panel and click directly on the layer mask so we can see we've got this frame going around it. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the Filter menu, choose Other, and we have the option here called Minimum. Now when this comes up, it's a very small basic dialog box. In fact, I put my cursor over into my picture and I'm actually click directly on me. And what we can see here is part of the layer mask, the white area being me, the black area being the background. And obviously I can zoom out all the way or I can come uh, a lot closer. I'll keep it to around about there. Now all we have in here is this radius slider and I can gradually start to bring this up little by little and as I do that, if we zoom in actually on this um, area just here so we can see part of the halo, let's take it back again. As I increase this radius slider, you'll start to notice that that halo actually disappears. So what we're actually doing here when we use that radius slider in the minimum dialog box there, we're minimizing the amount of white which is increasing the amount of black. And that black area is crushing down on the white area of the mask which means it's covering over the halo. Another good way to kind of look at it is this. If I just zoom out on the picture of myself, and what we'll do is, let me just increase this slider here, this radius slider, quite a lot. And you'll see, as I really do start to increase it, you'll notice that me, I start to get even smaller and even smaller. So what's basically happening is that mask, the black area is getting bigger, so it's hiding more and more. So we can use this just real small bits at a time to actually cover over that halo. Whereas before, what I used to do was just get a black brush and just paint over it. It used to take a long time. This is a much, much quicker way of doing it. Now that minimal command is fantastic for removing a halo when it goes all the way around the subject. However, you can also control exactly where you want it to remove it rather than affecting the whole picture. Now, what I mean by that is, let's just say again, with this picture here, we've got this halo, but we'll imagine for now, the only area that we want to remove the halo is just off the top of the shoulder and the neck, just here. What we can do, again, making sure that we are active on that layer mask and we can see that frame going around it, we can then use some of the selection tools, something like the lasso tool, and just make a very loose selection to tell Photoshop that we only want to affect the area within this selection here. Everything else outside it, just ignore it. So now if I go to that filter menu and choose other and minimum, we can then use it just as we did before. But this time, when we increase that radius slider to get rid of the halo, it only affects it within this particular area within the marching ant. So you can see now if I just click OK, we'll get rid of that selected area 
and then we can zoom in you can see here is the halo still visible and here is where I've removed it so that just kind of shows that you don't have to use it in a way where it's affecting the whole picture because there may well be pictures where the halo is only visible in certain parts if you just use the minimal command as, as a whole you'll shrink everywhere and you don't want to do that this allows you to control it so following on from that here we've got a picture of a model spitfire that i created i've actually already done the cutout so if we come over to the layers panel and i'll turn on the layer mask you can see there it has it's all been cut out and in fact i've also added a gray layer below so that we can see exactly what we've got and as we zoom in you can just about see there is still a little bit of the original background showing up as a halo going around the spitfire now to remove that, again, I will turn to that minimum command. So I'll make sure that the layer mask is active and we've got that frame going around it. Then I'll come to the filter menu, choose other and minimum. Now we already know we've got that radius slider. Let's just put the cursor there so we can see the difference between the black and the white. And we know that we can just increase that radius slider there to get to the point where the black has grown so much that the white gets less and the halo is covered over. So we're talking around about sort of maybe 1.1, 1.2. Also though, at the bottom, we have this preserve section. By default, it's set to roundness, but we also have squareness. Now, what this basically means is, as we increase that radius slider, as the black increases and it's following the shape of the object that we're cutting out, it'll keep any curves really smooth and just looking really, really good. However, it might be that the object that you've cut out and you want to reduce that halo on, it might not be so curved. It might be a lot more angular. That's when you'd maybe consider using the squareness option. Let me just show you what it does uh, in an exaggerated way. So I'll dive back over to that picture of myself and I'm gonna zoom right in to around about here. You can see the halo. We'll go to the filter menu, choose other and minimum. We'll use that radius slider to reduce that halo like so, but I'm gonna choose the squareness option. For a person's face, for anything organic, I would use the roundness, but we're just gonna use the squareness option at the moment. Now look, if I increase this to maybe around about 10, something like that, and then zoom in onto something like my ear, you can see what it's done. So it's straight lines that it's created to remove that halo. And obviously you wouldn't want that on this, but look now, if I change it from squareness to roundness, look how it smooths it all out. So that's why you would maybe look at changing the preserve section from roundness to squareness. Try it when you're using that minimum, depending on the object that you're uh, getting rid of the halo, jump between roundness and squareness to see what gives you the best results. Now, if I wanted to cut this tree out, there are lots of ways that I could do that. But in this example, I'm going to go to the select menu and choose color range. This has been in Photoshop for a long time and basically works that wherever I put my cursor, Photoshop looks at the color, the tones underneath it and says, well, obviously that's what you want to select. It looks across the whole of the picture to see if it can find similar ones. And everything that it finds is represented in this little preview area here. So the white areas are what will be selected the black areas are what won't be selected. We can then further finesse that by using this fuzziness slider. If we drag to the right, it increases the amount of the selection. If we drag it to the left, it decreases it. Now, obviously I just want the tree to be selected. So I'll put it around about there. I then click okay. And when I do that, we're given all these marching ants showing where the original white areas would be, which is the areas that are now selected. It's only the tree that I want to cut out, so I need to remove this from the selection. I'll get my lasso tool, hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, and then drag out a loose selection to include all the ground area that I do not want to select. And I'll come all the way around it, all the way back to the start, and then release. And you can see now that it removes the active selection from the ground. Next thing I'll do is I'll come to the Layers panel and click to add a layer mask to virtually cut out the tree from the background. And you can see that it's done that, although there are some transparent areas, which means it's not a completely solid cutout. In fact, if we look at the layer mask by holding down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and clicking directly on it, we can see what we've got. The layer mask, we need to be pure white and pure black, but we've got areas of gray. 
Now the way we can tidy that up is we would just get a brush and we'd just use a normal round brush and paint in black to remove it. But the problem comes when we get near the tree. If we're painting with a normal brush, we can go over the tree and that's not what we want to happen. So what we need to do is this. We'll get rid of the areas away from the tree by brushing over it. But then we'll come to the options bar at the top of the screen and change the blend mode of the brush from normal to overlay. This basically means now that the brush will only cover areas that are not pure white. So any areas that are black and any areas that are grey, it will cover over. Any area that is a pure white, it will leave well alone. So now if I just brush over the areas here, get near the tree, you can see that it's not affecting the tree whatsoever, even though my brush is on that white area. That's because we're using that overlay blend mode. Now I do need to make the tree more solid white so that it cuts out really well. And I can do that again using this brush and just changing the foreground color to white. So now that I'm using a white brush with the overlay blend mode, the brush will only cover over areas that are anything except for those areas that are pure black. So it'll cover over all these gray areas on the tree. And you can see I'm brushing really loosely over it. And even though I'm going over that black area, it's not showing up in anything at all. So I can very quickly now use this white brush in the overlay blend mode to make that tree pure white, which means it will be a great cutout. Now I'll just change the brush to black and tidy up this area over on the right hand side. But that's looking good. Let's go back to the normal view now. So there's the tree cut out. Let's add a layer directly below and we'll fill that with grey like we did earlier on with the other image just so that we can see if there are any issues. And sure enough, there's some halos, some fringing that we now need to fix. Now, one way that we could maybe look at removing the halo going around the tree, which is obviously traces of the original blue sky, is to come up to the layers panel, click directly on the thumbnail of the image itself, and then go to the bottom and choose the FX icon. When we click on that, we can choose one of the options here called Inner Glow. Now when this opens up, there's just a couple of things we need to change. The first one being the blend mode. By default, it'll be set to color dodge. If we just change that to normal. Next thing we do here, we've got this little color swatch is to click on that to bring up the color picker. Then bring your cursor over into your image and press down on some of the green foliage. As you click down, that color is now sampled and you can see that in the new section. Then click OK. Now we can see that that inner glow is being applied to the tree to cover over the halo. And you'll see that if I turn it off and on, off and on. So now let's click OK and we can see that that's OK, but it does have one problem. And that is that the inner glow is now around the whole of the tree, not just the branches, the green leaves, but also the brown branches and the trunk. And you can see that that doesn't look so good where it should be brown is now showing as green. So what we can do is restrict where that is visible. And all we need to do is just put our cursor over the name of the effect we've just applied. So it says inner glow and then right click and right at the bottom. It says create layer. When we click on that, it turns that layer effect into a layer and we can see it's now placed at the top of the layer stack. Then all I need to do is just add a black layer mask to hide the contents of this layer. So I'll come to the bottom now, hold down the option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, click on the layer mask icon. It then hides that effect and I can just come in now with a brush with a white foreground color, making sure that the mode at the top is set to normal and then just brush over to reveal that inner glow layer where I want it to be. Now it's quite a time intensive method, but it does work really well on the branches. However, the problem comes when we come further on down here, we've got these brown branches, which obviously we don't want to be green. Now to fix that, we can add more than one layer effect. So all I would do is click back on the actual thumbnail of the tree in the layers panel, come to that effects icon, choose inner glow. And this time I would click on the color swatch and just sample the brown of the branches. That then puts it into the new section. We click OK, then click OK to close the layer style dialog. Obviously that brown now is all over the tree. We don't want it. So again, we'll create a layer from it. I put my cursor over the words inner glow, 
right click and choose create layer. So now we have the green leaves in a glow layer and we have the brown branches in a glow layer. I can then add a black layer mask to that to hide the whole effect and then use that white brush just to reveal where I want it. So this is where I would want the brown branches like so, painting really quick, really loose to bring those back and make them visible. And anywhere that I want the actual green branches to be covered over because they've got the glow, I will just click on that in the actual uh, layers panel and then brush to cover that over with the green. Now the only problem here is that we're covering over all those different green leaves with just one green color and all those brown branches we're using just one brown color to cover all those over. So it's gonna have its limitations. I think for something like this, I would maybe turn to the technique that I showed in a previous video where I was fixing the hair using the clone stamp tool. For something like this, it would work perfect. I'll put a link to that in the description part of this video. Now I'll admit this video has gone on just a little bit longer than I expected it to, but I hope it's been useful. If it has, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button, because as you know, that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But I need to get on with some packing now. So that's me. I am done. I'll see you in the next video.